forsaken I am who you say I am You are for me, not against me I am who you say I am I am chosen, not forsaken I am who you say I am against me I am who you say can we all sing that together I am chosen not forsaken I am who you say I am you are for me you are yes you are me. not against not me against me I am who you say I am Amen. I am chosen I am chosen, I am chosen. I'm not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me. You are not against me. Not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. You are for me. Not against. tells us otherwise, all those evil thoughts, all the voices of the devil that belittle our worth and, our, and the worth that we find in ourselves. And we triumph that voice with the voice and the, the promise that God has told us that we are his children, that we are princesses and princes, sons and daughters of the most high king. so lucky, so lucky, so blessed, so blessed, amen, 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 thank you Jesus, we have found our worth in you, we have found our worth in you, our identity is in you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you 
for today. We thank you for the future programs that you will lead us through, all the sermons we will hear, the word of God that we will hear, the way you will move throughout this building and touch our lives, the way that you will remind us once again that we are your sons and daughters, Lord, that we will one day come back to where we where you wanted us to be, in your garden, Lord, in your house, back with you, Lord. Until that day, may we forever praise your name, lift you higher. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Yes, yes, we are so glad that you came to church, you came to our youth service, amen? Turn around and greet somebody. Yes, so if this is your first time to our youth service, we want you please stand up. Yes, please tell us your name, where you came from. Yes, let's welcome them. Oh. Please remain standing, please. Yes, uh, please tell us your name, where you came from. Hi everyone, my name is Jeremy, I'm from Indonesia, and it's an honor to be here. Woo! <laughs> Hi, I'm Aiko, and I'm also from Indonesia. It's nice to meet all of you. Hi guys, I'm Cecilia, I'm also from Indonesia. Nice to meet you guys. Hi everyone, my name is Abigail. I'm from Indonesia too. Nice to meet you all of you guys. Thank you so much. Yes, we have uh, other people also joining from other churches uh, at the back. Thank you so much for joining our service. Let's give every one of them a, a round of applause. Woo! Yes. Uh, we have youth service every Saturday at 7 p.m. at our church. So you are always welcome to our church. Amen. So before we go any further, we're going to collect the offering. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Talam and his friend uh, to come forward and collect the offering. So uh, while they are making their way, uh, I'd like to read uh, from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Paul's writing, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? God loves a cheerful giver. So uh, let us give generously. Let us be a cheerful giver. Amen? So during uh, collecting the offering, we have a special team to present a song. Let me pray for the offering. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful evening uh, to praise your name, to worship you, Lord. Uh, Lord, as we are collecting the offering, we pray the Lord... Um, you will bless this offering to be a blessing and to expand your kingdom. Use the, this offering. And also, Lord, we pray that everyone who gives this offering, they will uh, receive blessings in return. Thank you, Jesus. We, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give the uh, team a round of applause. Um, the song that I'm going to sing is called Buam Eat. And for me, the song depicts God's love as a love that doesn't require our works, right? A love that is always here for us, um, even when we turn away or even when we think that our worth, when we think that we're not deserving of that love, right? And this song is just saying how his love is everlasting and his love is one of a kind. So I hope you guys enjoy.
Mars. Hi guys, I am here to give you guys some announcements. So okay, kung din na kaya announcement ti na isya mo ina amasape ni na lungdam ko na ang nay no mung mo kang no lom bom a in kong hon yada ang kihel camp yung lungdam mama no le no kud bet na kipya mo le. Thank you guys so much. Um, tua sumga sa to kesa mo fundraise na to kesa na nga sa pen hon tui na ang zasaklay nong ay in um, so if we could pull up the slide for Sports Day. So like I mentioned last week, we are going to have Sports Day next Saturday. So uh, make sure that you arrive here by church at 2. We want to leave by 2.30 at the latest. And our location is Heike Creek Park. And then also please bring a $5 fee. That will be your entrance for like food and um, a lot of games that we're going to do. So yeah, let's have sports day. And uh, I also want to mention um, that if you have any friends that are um, not from this church as well, you are so welcome to bring them to our sports day. And then second, we are going to have CA Sunday, the last week of this month. And so, nung kala kong zak sak mabanga mo, pasal le numay, ibe ka professional attire suit, tiran kong mo, po ita ka kizem, sit set ding, ina youth choir zong kisa ding, ina toa zong ahun zuya, siya siyan, ahi zong siya kupite, ahi zong mo, laong kimakai ding, ina ibe ka kimnyad ding, si zong zasak no minge. In youth, youth Sunday a zong, fundraising kene ding mo, in toa zong a kang note activities ina ina ding, ina sum ki, Ki raise nuam ahi mana na enzong panpi jani an home lama zong kihut jani ji zong zasak nuaming eh, and then last but not least our youth conference. So I'm here to give you announcements once again about our youth conference. So if you see the QR code, you can scan. And like I mentioned last week, our deadline for early bird is May fifth. So you guys have less than a month to sign up for Early Bird, okay? So make sure you don't miss that if you want the discount. Our regular fee is $75. Our Early Bird is $60. And um, I also want to give you guys a recap of the details I talked about last week. So for our conference, it'll be June 20 to 22. So that's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Our speakers are Dr. Mung and Bobby Parks. And um, like I mentioned, we are going to have a conference session here at church, but we're also going to Camp Logridge for our uh, discipleship and mission training and um, a lot of games and activities. So, and we are also going to have our outreach, outreach sites, like I mentioned last week. So um, we are also going to have more announcements, more videos about that coming up. So please stay tuned, check our Instagram page. That's where we'll be putting all of our updates. If you um, don't catch this QR code, the link is also in our Instagram bio, our youth Instagram bio. So you can click on that as well. And now, uh, please turn your attention to the screens. We have a short video for our youth conference. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me. For the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted. And to proclaim that captives will be released. And prisoners will be freed. Wow! Nasiak cai mana guai? Ilo pia? Ilo pale sign up jaja ni mo? Hina tuang what is what is the time now? So right now is the quiz time. Woo! Are you all excited? Okay, tuang i prize dandi 
How can we give them the prize? So, first of all, the prize is going to be... Um, it's a surprise. Okay? Oh. <laughs> and we're going to give to you guys at the end of the service. Um, yeah. Okay, how many questions do we have? I think we have 10. Okay, 10. Oh, it's exciting. So, Hidaka, uh, Ikuisa, so if you know the answer, you have to stand up, all right? And you have to raise your hand, and Dokub or yeah, someone else will give you the mic, and you have to answer, okay? You have to stand up, raise your hand, okay? Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Okay, let's go. What's the first question? Let's see. All right, let's see. Okay. Which Mary represents a person from whom Jesus drives out seven demons? All right. Wang Wang. Wang Wang. Yeah. Okay. Mary, the sister of Martha. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary Magdalene. Mary, the wife of Clopas. Correct answer. Uh, it's going to be C, Mary Magdalene. That's correct answer. Woo! Woo! All right, next. For God has given us, not given us a spirit of fear, but of blank. Okay, all right. But love and sound mind. Who is it? Tinu, let's go. Um, I think it's. All right. Wait, 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 wait. Five. Wait. It's four, C, it's C again. C, no. Oh, Sorry. No. <laughs> Next. Anyone else? You have to oh, stand up. Navas, Navas. Navas, let's go. Woo! Okay, guys, you have to stand up, okay? Yes. Yeah. I'll take B. B, P. B, B, B. B? Yeah. As in Is peace? it correct? It is wrong, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> anyone else? Oh, Sasan, Sasan. Sasan. A, power. That is correct. Woo! Okay, thank you so much. Let's oh, go. Yeah, uh, guys, sorry. You can stand up before we finish reading our question. Okay. Yes. Yeah. First okay. come, first serve. I think the questions are too easy for them. Yeah, yeah. Let's make it a bit harder, right? All right, let's see. Okay. Which religious group do not believe in resurrection or what? Life after death. Which group? One, two, three, go. Okay, Talam. Talam. Woo! Hey, yeah. What, what? B. B. Celsius. Yes, that's correct answer. Woo! That's correct. Good job. Thank you. Okay, the next question is not in the Bible. But okay. I'd like to ask to uh, our youth group. Okay. Uh, so bonus point? Yeah, bonus. Okay. What is our mission statement? Wow. What is the mission statement of FEMCY? Nobody knows? Oh. Two. Oh. Who? Tang Tang? Oh. FEMCY mission statement. Uh, love God, love people. That is FEMC, not FEMCY. Huh? For the, for the youth, for the We're talking about the youth. Yes, we talk about the youth. Okay, right, Siamu. Siamu for us. Connect and care. Yes, yes it is connect and care. Okay, let's go to the next question, Tuang. All right? right, next. Who prayed to God to stop the sun and the moon? Sa Salud, Salud. She said Joshua. Joshua. All right, wow, that's, correct. that's correct answer. Good job. Good job. Okay, number four. Now let's go to number five. Okay, according to Jesus' teaching, who is like a person who builds a house on solid rock? A, a person who studies and understands his teachings. B, a person who listens and follows his teaching. C, a person who speaks in tongues. D. A person who hears and meditates his teaching. Okay, wait. wait uh, if you answered already, I think 
should should they answer again? Uh, we gotta p- give people a chance. Oh, a lot of people say no, so we'll oh, skip okay. Them. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, if you know the right answer, please stand up. Yeah, you should stand up. Give your shot. I think if no one stands up, uh, sh- do you think they should get a second chance like those who already stood up? Mm, yeah, let's give them a chance. Okay. Yeah. That All right. sounds good. Okay, Salon, let's go. It's B. B? B? A person who listens and follows his teachings. That's correct. Wow. Woo! Okay, let's go to question number six. six. Okay. This is very easy, but wait for the question. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is... Oh, Chinu, you have, you to, have to wait. You have to stand oh. Up. oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead, oh, go okay, ahead. Okay, okay. It's freedom. Yay, let's go. Uh, freedom is... Correct. Correct. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Let's go to seven. question number... Seven. How many days did Jesus appear to the apostles after he suffered and died? A. Three days. B. Thirty days. C. Forty days. D. Fifty days. Yes, if you know the answer. Toy it, toy it. Woo! C. See, 40 days. Uh, that's correct. Ah. <laughs> good job, good job. All right. Okay. Call from money for the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, this hey, is Matthew, easy. the tax collector, the Karas, the tax collector, uh, Simon the sorcerer, and Paul the apostle. You have to stand up. Okay, Kai. Woo. See. See, Simon the Sorcerer, that is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Good job, Kai Peace. Okay. What is the fear of the Lord according to the book of Proverbs? A. To depart from evil. B. To help the poor. C. To search wisdom at all cost. D. To keep silent. No, you are. Uh, you have let's give chance to others. Right C. 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 That is almost correct. Almost. Almost. You're close. Yes, very close. No one? And let's go to Kai. Come on. A. A to depart from evil. Yes, that is correct. The fear of the Lord is to depart from evil, according to the book of Proverbs. Okay, now is the last question. Woo! Those who control their tongue will have a long life, B, self-control, C, wisdom, D, favor. Okay, come. Anyone? Hold on. <laughs> anyone? No, let's give them a chance first. Okay, anyone, anyone? Navas? Oh, oh, no, you have, you have to stand up. You have to stand up. Oh, okay. I was wrong, though. <laughs> no, it's okay. But you okay. didn't get it right. So. See? See, wisdom is not correct. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, A. Sorry? A. A, long life is correct. Yay! Yeah! 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 Those who control their life, tongue will have what? A long, long life. life. Okay. Right. Thank you so much. Now, uh, thank you so much for answering the questions. And you can claim the prize later and talk to uh, one of us. And now we'd like to welcome Sum Singh. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Everybody excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Yes. Who's excited? Everybody? 
Good, good, good. Today I want to introduce a really good friend of mine and a man of God. Um, Jeremy Mantofa, he was born in December 2004. And his desire to become a pastor started at the age of three. Together with his family, he is serving the Lord in Jerijamawa, Marasharan, Rose of Sharon Church in Surabaya, Indonesia, until today. Jeremy is the son of Philip Mantofa and Irene Safira. Safira. Okay. And he is currently a junior. At, senior at ORU, uh, studying um, leadership and uh, concentration in church operations. Um, not only is he a great friend of mine, but he's going to bring a great word today. Can we all stand up and welcome Jeremy Mentofa today? Testing? Testing? Hello? Yes. Okay. It's such an honor to be here, and first of all, I would like to say thank you to Pastor Kam and Pastor Mang. Such an honor to be here, and you all may be seated. So, <laughs> before I start, I want to say this simple thing to you guys: Ongai <laughs> Mahmaing. I love you all very, very much from the deepest part of my heart. Speaking honestly with you, uh, Burma has a special place in my heart, in my father's heart, in our ministry's heart. Not only the land, but the people, more so the people. We had so much history with Burma, going, tracing back to 2000 and early 2004, 2005, before I was born, maybe before some of you guys were born. When the gates of, of Christianity were closed in Burma, our church went to Burma to serve the people there. And it's been my heart's desire to serve to the people. And as I prayed and God led me to meet this amazing brother of mine, David, we talked and there was just this connection and I, I know it's the Holy Spirit. And I prayed, I said, Lord, I want to be used to bless the people of Burma. And then not long after this opportunity was opened, that's why this, this is more than a service to me and I don't say this as a form of formality. I say this from the deepest part of my heart. I mean it. I love each one of you guys. I love your nation. I love your Holy Spirit. Amen. And a little bit about me, uh, what they mentioned. I'm from Indonesia. I study ministry and leadership right now in, in ORU, very close from here. I didn't know it was this close. So when I was driving, I'm like, I thought I, I got ready early. I'm like, what? It's only seven minutes away. I'm like, okay, that's, that's perfect. I can be, come here earlier. And <laughs> so I study ministry and leadership. It's been my heart's desire to be a pastor since at the age of three. And I just want to tell you guys that following the Lord is cool. Amen. Saying no to sin is cool. Amen. Living according to the Bible is cool. And today, let me talk about my best friend, the Holy Spirit. I want to talk to you about the relationship I have with the Holy Spirit. And I want you all to experience that too. I wanted to talk to you guys about the fire of the Holy Spirit. Fun fact, actually, I wanted to give this sermon title, Burn My Heart, O Lord. See what I did there, Burma? <laughs> right? <laughs> but, 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 what I'm trying to say is I'm Burmese by heart. I am Burmese by heart. And let me talk from one Burmese to another. It's just that I was not born in Burma. I, don't, I may not look Burmese. I don't speak your language, but I speak your Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right, so let's turn our hearts to Exodus 3. Verse 1 until 6. My title today, my re real title today, is The Burning Bush, The Fire of the Holy Spirit. Now, what is the fire of the Holy Spirit? Before we read in, in Exodus 3, let me read Matthew 3, verse 11. I can read it for you. Just the last sentence of it. He, which is Jesus, He will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. He will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire fire. Now, what is the fire of the Holy Spirit? Today, I give you four things about what the Holy Spirit's fire is. Let's read in uh, Exodus 3, verse 1 until 6. I'm reading NIV, New International, New, yeah, International Version. So if you are figuring out which version I'm reading, I'm reading NIV. Right, let's, <clears throat> let's read it together. 
Exodus 3, verse 1 until 6. Moses and the burning bush. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb. Everyone say Horeb. Horeb. The mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within the bush. Everyone say within. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. Why the bush does not burn up? When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Now, before coming deeper, let us all pray before we dive deeper. Lord, thank you for today, a beautiful day you have given us in church. And we pray, Lord, today that you would speak to us and may you hide me behind your cross, only your cross be lifted high. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk to you guys verse by verse and about what, what the Holy Spirit's fire is. First, let's, I'm going to read to you guys again, verse 1. Here it says, Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro. He was tending the flock. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb. As I mentioned, Horeb. What do you, now, now, I'm going to give you the 11th, or actually the 12th question to the trivia. Anyone here knows the meaning of Horeb? Sorry, what was that? That's good, but it's not yet quite there. It's good though. Give her a big round of applause, won't you? A meeting place with God, I like that. But more so, it means place of desolation. Or simple terms, the place, uh, the quiet place. Now, what is the fire of the Holy Spirit? Number one, a fire that is ignited in secret places. A fire that is ignited in secret places. The Holy Spirit's fire ignites in us only when we are desolated from the world and we are in a quiet place with Him. The the fire of God, the Holy Spirit, only sparks only when we live in holiness. Now, what does holy mean? Simply means set apart. When we are being desolated from the world and in a quiet place with Him, there the fire sparks, The, the fire ignites. The difference between the Holy Spirit's fire and normal fire is simply this. The Holy Spirit's fire is not the fire that, 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 is, a bo- that is a boasting fire, like that of the wildfires. Have you guys seen a, a whole jungle being just eaten by, 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 by fire? No, the Holy Spirit's fire is not like that. If the Holy Spirit's fire is in this room, you would have to pay attention to it to know that it is the fire. It ignites in the secret places. All these times I thought that the fire of God comes from conferences. When we have conferences, we lift our hands together, you know, with our friends. But he said, no, it it ignites in the place, in the quiet place. When you lock your door and you pray to the Lord, when you read the Bible at night, now that is when the Holy Spirit's fire ignites. His fire is not found in the most common places. It is found in the secret place. Now, what does the fire look like in your secret place? Even before coming here, in my room, I locked myself in my room. I I prayed to the Lord before coming here. I said, Lord, if your fire is not with me, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. I said, if I don't feel something burning in my heart, I don't want to go. Burn my heart, Lord. Burn my heart. I said, Lord, burn my heart. I'm not saying burn my heart as in real fire or else I won't be here. <laughs> burn my spirit. Make me your young evangelist. Make me your young preacher. Make me your young army. When you pray in the quiet place, when you pray in the private, the power will be in public. You know, all these times I thought that the people that are the most on fire for God are those who just lift their hands and people just started falling in the spirit. 
Turns out, no, those people who are more, most on fire for God are the people that lock themselves in the room and pray. So number one, simple, a fire that is ignited in secret places. I'm not going to go long on this one. I have many more things to talk to you about. Now let us read verse 2. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Everyone say within. The fire was found within the bush. That's so weird, right? I'm like, what? How can a fire be found within a bush? All right, let's talk science, okay? Let us talk something that makes sense, okay? <laughs> if you see, maybe if, who here likes to garden? I mean, who here likes gardening? Do you guys like gardening? Okay, can I give you guys a homework to do? You, you have a lighter, a fire lighter? <laughs> can you try to put one fire? Okay, for those of you who know, I'm just joking. Don't do this for real, okay? <laughs> put the fire near to a, a leaf, the bush. Will it be found within or will it be found all over the bush? All over the bush. I said, Lord, this doesn't make sense. I said, Lord, this doesn't make sense. And God told me it doesn't make sense because sense didn't make it. God made it. If it makes sense, then it doesn't make God. <laughs> Hallelujah. The fire was found within the bush. All right, all right, all right. Now, I have a picture to show you guys. I forgot. I wanted to show you guys a picture. Two pictures, actually. The first one, yeah, that's the fire, okay? The fire was found within the bush. But you know what else? What fire is also found within? Can I see the next photo, please? Thank you. The fire within our hearts. The fire was found within the bush, yet it did not burn the bush up. Okay? Catch that, catch that idea, okay? The fire of God is found within our hearts, yet it doesn't burn us out. My second point, a fire that does not burn us out. A fire that does not burn us out. What does it mean by being burned out? All right, burn out is simply like this. Let me give you an example. All right, you guys ready? What is burn out? <sighs> that is burn out. It's when you are so tired, you know, you, you just be like, man, I'm so tired of school. I'm so burnt out. I need, I need... <laughs> I need to go somewhere. I need to go to a theme park. I'm so burnt out. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. Now that is being burnt out. The fire of the Holy Spirit burns within us. It is blazing, but it doesn't burn us out. The, the fire was blazing, yet it did not burn up the thin leaves. It did not burn it up. Like, like what I said, if it makes sense, then God didn't make it. If it makes sense, then God didn't make it. The fire was found within the bush, yet it didn't burn it up. I, I, I keep on saying this. I'm like, what? What is this? It doesn't make sense. Yet the fire of the Holy Spirit is the same. It's blazing, yet it doesn't burn our sensitive hearts. Our hearts are very sensitive, you know. Uh, our hearts are very sensitive like, like a leaf. Just a little bit of fire and then our whole hearts will be burned down. If you don't believe me, who here has, has experienced this? Maybe, let's say if your friend, let's say if your friend come to you and say, hey, you know what? You know what? Um, you know what that person said about you? He said that you're such a bad guy. Mm. <laughs> or maybe even worse. <laughs> he said that, I couldn't think of anything. Wow. <laughs> Can you give me an example of what, 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 what burns your heart? Maybe he, he, okay, he stabbed you in the back. Ooh, everyone say, ooh. <laughs> now let me ask you, who here is holy enough to not be burned out? I'm not going to raise my hand. I'm not holy enough. <laughs> we are going to be burned out. We're going to say, really? What did he say about me? Oh, I'm going to get him back. Oh, I'm going to get her back. You know what? <laughs> Don't do that, by the way, okay? <laughs> Our hearts are very sensitive, like, like, like leaves, like this tissue. If I put just a little bit of, maybe a little bit of water, the whole thing is going to break. Our hearts are the same. We put a little bit of gossip, the whole heart is going to burn down. But the fire of the Holy Spirit is not like that. One time, I thought I was so on fire for Christ. 
I thought like, whoa, I'm like, all right, Lord, I'm so ready. I, I was preaching in front of people. I was laying hands. I was praying for the sick. But deep down, I said, Lord, I'm burnt out. I'm so tired, Lord. I'm so tired. Like ministry, Lord, is, I don't find the joy of it anymore. And he, I said, but I'm on fire for you, Lord. And he said, is it really my fire? Is it the fire of the Holy Spirit or the fire of your ego? And that just got me. I'm like, you know, I was in my room, the fire of your ego. I'm like, oh, wow. That hit me. The fire of the Holy Spirit does not burn you up. Does, can you be tired physically? Of course. I mean, could you be tired from ministry physically speaking? Of course. We are all human. But deep down within, you will never be tired. Joshua, let's say, I've been reading a lot about Joshua these days. He said this, I am still as strong as I was when I was 40. And he said that when he was 80. May, many, many people, theologians, interpret it as being he was still physically strong. I can prove you that he was not as strong. Why? If he was still as strong, then he would fight the battle himself. But he sent someone to fight the battle for him. Why did he say, I'm still as young? Not because of his body. Not because his body wasn't, was never tired. The fire never burned. In, the, the fire never ceased in his heart. He said, I'm still as young. Uh, right now I'm 80. I was 40. The fire is still the same. If you see me, I'm 19 years old. I'm 19 years old. Any, I'm like any normal 19-year-old. I like sports. I like to listen to music. But if you see my fire, my fire is not 19 years old. It's 2,000 years old. The fire in my heart is not 19-year-old. That's why I said, Lord, can you use young people? I was praying, Lord, could you use young people, Lord? Could you use me? And then he said, I could. And just right now, before, before coming to this stage, I was kneeling down here. When you guys were worshiping, I, everything was dark. I knelt down. And I said this prayer to the Lord. Lord, use me. No matter how big, how small, just use me. No matter how big, how small, just use me, O oh Lord. That fire in my heart, my body may be 19 years old, but the fire in me is 2,000 years old. The fire never makes me burn out. It is a fire that makes me even more on fire, not makes me down, makes me burn up. You know what, what I do when I'm, I'm, I'm burned out? I'm very burned out. Many times, you know, especially me, I, no, I mean, in my life, especially me being a young person, I experience the things that I talk to you. Once, one of a leader in the church, not, not in the church, one of the leaders, in the Christian leaders of, of yeah, in, in the organization, he, had, uh, he talked about me behind my back. He said that I was sleeping around. In my heart, I'm like, no, no, no. I can, I'm, I'm proud to say that I'm a virgin. I'm waiting for one woman for the rest of my life for marriage. And, but he, he said that about me. My heart, I was burned out. Oh Lord, why did you do this? Well, no, I just said, why did, you, why did you let this happen? I was burned out. But during those moments, he said, ask for my fire. Ask for your fire? It's going to burn me up even more. I mean, if you, you're burned from fire... If let's say you see a, a fire in a house, you don't add fire into it. Don't do that. <laughs> but the fire of the Holy Spirit is different. His fire is very sweet, very tender, and very loving. It doesn't burn you up. His fire doesn't burn you up. And after that, I prayed, Lord, I prayed so many times. The first, the first hours, maybe some, some hours, I prayed. Uh, I stopped in between to eat. Of course, to go to the restroom. I, I prayed. I said, Lord, I couldn't do this. Lord, I could never do this alone. I need your fire. I need your fire, oh Lord. I need your fire. I could not do this on my own. 
And he gently touched my heart and he said, who said that you're going to do this alone? I'm with you. From that moment I said, I don't care what people say. I just do this for one audience, for him. I called my dad. My dad is a pastor, as I mentioned before. He, he has a huge heart for Burma. I called him over. I said, Dad, this person said this about me and stuff. I said, I need, I need your prayers. And he reminded me this one word that I want to share to you. He said, don't live for what they say. Do this for one person, Jesus, and he's going to bring that blessing to another person. All right? So I'm going to do it for one person, and that person is going to be a blessing to other people. I just say, I do this for one person, for Jesus. And Jesus is going to take that blessing. I'm going to give something to Jesus. Lord, here's the one water I have. Give it to Jesus, and Jesus is going to find the right people to say, here, drink from this water. So from that moment on, I said, every time I feel burnout, I need your fire. It's a fire that never does, that does, does never burn me out. Amen? Amen. So I, I'm going to recap. Number one, a fire that is ignited in secret places. Okay? Number two, a fire that does not burn us out. Are you ready for more? Yes. Let us read in verse three. So Moses thought, Moses saw that, right? Could you imagine, right? Could you imagine seeing a, a bush f- uh, filled with fire w- from within? He said, so Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. Why does the bush does not burn up? Everyone say, go over. Sometimes, why couldn't we hear the voice of God? It's because when we see the fire, we don't go over to look. We go away. We don't go over. So Moses saw that burning bush, all right? Let's say this is the burning bush. He saw it. He said, what? What is that? So he went over. He went closer. He went deeper. Many times you say, why does the Lord, why, Lord, why, couldn't, why don't you speak to me? Simple, because you don't walk over. You don't come closer. Moses said, I will go over and see. He heard something. He heard something that is of God, that is more than a noise. Which voice are you hearing in your head? The voice of you or the voice of God? Let me, I can prove you that the, that the thoughts of men is very evil. Remember this story where Peter said to Jesus, Lord Jesus, you don't have to die on the cross. And then Jesus turned to him and said, get behind me, die Satan. For you are thinking the thoughts of? Thoughts of Satan? No, 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 no. no. The thoughts of men. You're thinking the thoughts of men. The thoughts of men are, is what is really evil. But that is inspired by what? By Satan. So one thing I, I hold in my life simple, I consider Satan's word as a noise, but God's word as a voice. A voice doesn't need to be loud to be heard. A noise does. Is this a noise? Let me tell you. Is that a noise? Right? Is it saying something to you? Is this a voice? Yeah, it is a voice. It is not as loud, but it is more powerful. Sometimes, me too, I demand, Lord, shout in my heart. Say something to me, even here. And then the Lord said, when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, when the Lord saw that Moses took a step of faith to get closer to that fire, God called to him from within the bush, saying, Moses, Moses. The Lord was not like, Moses, Moses. He was like, he went like this. Moses, Moses. He went with a very small and still voice. In another version, it says, and the Lord whispered. The Lord whispers. The way the Lord speaks to you is through, sometimes through his whisper. My third point, it's a fire that resounds God's word. It is a fire that resounds God's word. God's voice, not Satan's noise. Sometimes when Satan talks to me, hey, Jeremy, you're still young. One time he told me, you're still very young. Just go ahead and live your life. I mean, you're never going to be young anymore. You're never going to be young a lot. You're, you're throwing away your youth. I was fighting that feeling. And then 
Of one point, I, I was fighting it. I was so tired of fighting it. I was burned out. I said, why am I fighting this? Simply, I said this, hey, Satan, I don't talk to Satan, okay? Because Satan is very tricky. Let me tell you how tricky he is. He can come to you and say, have you ever lied before? If you said yes, then you have lied before. If you said no, then you are lying. <laughs> Satan is that tricky. I don't, use, I don't talk to Satan, but I said this one time. Hey, Satan, get away from me. Your voice, your, your word is just a noise. God's word in me from within the bush, the quiet, still, and whispery voice. Now that is the, the voice. I listen to that. I don't care about how loud the enemy's voice is. I look at the Bible. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. When people say, oh, you, you're never going to be good, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. And you say anything to me, I, I quote this whisper in my heart. This whisper speaks louder than the enemy's noise. That and that. The, the second one is not, not, is less loud. It's, it's more quiet, but it means more to me. Amen? So you have to learn to listen to God's word. Now, God's word is not always audible. Usually, in my experience and the people I know, God's voice, when is it audible? It is audible when it says nations. One of the times that I, personally, I've never experienced, I never heard the Lord's voice audibly. I did in, in, in my dream, but never in, in like when I'm awake. But my dad did once. Uh, more than once, I think. But the only time he told me was that one time he was walking and the Lord told to him, Burma. He heard Burma. And that time, Burma was crazy. The persecution, I think the pastors here know much more. Persecutions, they were killing people. They were, it was so bad. The Lord said, Burma. And long story short, he did, he went to Burma to preach the gospel. And in that same day, he went, he arrived, him and his team. So he went with 12 people. 11 of them were men. The only woman was my mom. Because my mom, my dad said, you, you, you don't go. But my mom said, I have to come with you. I have to come with you. And my dad said, what if we die? And my mom said, we die together. I, I just, that's why I find yourself a woman like that. I'm talking to myself too. <laughs> and when they arrived, let me tell you. The temples of, of Burma, there were snakes falling from the sky. And it's in the news. I don't, I don't know if it was hurt for people here. Snakes were falling from the sky. And there was one snake that fall, fell in the, in the biggest, uh, I, I forgot the place of the temple. The biggest one was a python. It was very big, like six meters long, longer. And from that moment, he said, okay, spiritual warfare. And then he held a crusade. In that crusade, he prayed for people and people just started falling. People started weeping, repenting. And then afterwards, one of the government officials went up to the stage and said, from now on, Christianity is legal in Burma. But sadly, things happen again and now it's closed doors. But that happened in the past. Why can't it happen now? I'm going to talk more about that in just a minute. But I want to talk more about God's word. What is God's word? Let's, yeah, what is, what is God's word? Let's, let's see in verse 4 again. The Lord said, Moses, Moses. <clears throat> Why did God mention Moses' name twice? Let me tell you. Because in the Hebrew form of literature, when you want to highlight something, you say it twice. Because a long time ago, there was not, you know, you know if you're texting, and this one, one form, it says bolt, you know, Bolt, it's just, you can just see it dif differentiated from other, other texts. The way you Bolt in literature for Jewish literature was you mentioned it twice. <clears throat> so God highlighted the name of Moses. Now, what is the word of God? The word of God, when I read this, God told me, my word, I always highlight you. You are the highlight of my word. You are the highlight of my word. When you read the word, if you say, I don't understand anything from the Bible, what is this? What is this even saying? This, the son of, the son of, the son of, the son of, the son of. Sometimes reading the Bible can be very hard, I know. 
very hard. But when you start reading it and saying, wow, the whole highlight of this is me. It's like God's love letter to you and me. Let me give you a simple explanation. I was once reading um, Numbers, and it said, the sacrifice of offering, you must choose a lamb that is very, a fattened calf, or one with no spots in it, and then you must uh, kill it, and then you must do something with the blood, and then you must, uh, sp- you must turn on a different type of fire. I'm like, what is all this? Why do I have to know this? And then he told me this simple thing. Why did I choose animal over leaves? I'm not talking about vegan or vegetarian. No, I'm not talking about that. But I have to say meat is very good. <laughs> I said, why did you have to choose a sheep instead of maybe something more simple to get? You know, if you want to get a sheep, it's very heavy. You have to get it. You have to kill it. If it were, if it were a plant, it would be so much easier. You just take it and just offer it to God. And he said, which one takes longer to burn? He said, of course, the sheep. And he told me this. When you read that, you know why I chose the sheep? It's because I want to be here with you longer. I want you to stay here with me longer. I want you to stay longer in this sacrifice. When you start seeing everything in light of you being the highlight, I'm not talking about us being very selfish, no. The whole Bible just becomes more beautiful. Amen? Let us, let us, let's, Continue in verse 4 after he said, Moses, Moses, and Moses said, here I am. Moses, Moses. He didn't run away from it. He ran to it. He didn't walk away. He walked closer. He said, here I am, Lord. That is one thing the Holy Spirit is waiting to listen for young people to say, here I am. It broke my heart once as I was sleeping. The Holy Spirit told me this one sentence that maybe some theologians will say that it's weird, but I don't, I don't, I don't I'm just going to tell you. He said, Jeremy, I'm homeless. I'm homeless. I'm not saying that he doesn't have enough money. No, he went down to earth to dwell among you and me. And then the second part, he said, will you be my home? That just touched me. He said, I'm homeless. Just imagine if, if let's say, I come to Tulsa and I don't have a home. I wanna, I, I'm going to knock at your door. Can I come to your home? He's looking for young people, young hearts to dwell in. That moment I wept, I said, Lord, don't just make me your home. Be my master. This is your home now. My body is no longer mine. I'm your temple. He's looking for best friends right now. Holy Spirit is the, the Holy Spirit is still looking for young people to respond to the call. Young people just, that says, here I am, O Lord. Here I am, O Lord. In verse 5, God said, do not come any closer. God said, take off your sandals for the place you are standing is holy ground. Why did he say take off your sandals? It's to remind Moses that he is holy, God is holy, and Moses is sinful. Sandals were considered the most dirty part. I mean, feet, the feet was considered the most dirty part because they didn't have shoes like us, like we do. When Moses took off his sandals, it reminded me of how sinful he was and how clean the Lord was. You know what? The Word of God reminds us, the fire of the Holy Spirit reminds us of how sinful we are and how worthy He is. Those people who are just so on fire for God, how would I differentiate people on fire for God and not simple? Do they speak highly of themselves? When they do, that's not the fire of the Holy Spirit. That's the fire of your ego. I'm not going to say this to offend anyone. I'm not perfect. I really am not perfect. I'm not, I, I even say I'm not, I consider myself not humble. I'm not trying to be humble. I really am not. I'm very ambitious. But the Holy Spirit keeps on trimming my heart, making me day by day more and more like Him. But just yesterday, He told me this statement. As you know, I'm a, pre- I'm a preacher. Back home in Indonesia, I preach uh, in, in our churches. I preach in 
in gatherings and retreats. And he told me this, you want to know the most successful sermons? I said, yeah, the one with, where more, most people repent. No. The one where um, most people attend? No. He told me this. The ones where you are forgotten and I am remembered. You want to know the best ministry you can do? It's not your glory. It's for His glory. From that day I said, Lord, I'm never again going to use you. I want to be used by you. What does it mean using God? Okay, what does it mean? Maybe if there's a brother here who you worship the Lord, you worship and you sing the song, and then you turn around and you see an angel of God. I'm not talking about this angel. I'm talking about the opposite gender, if you know what I mean. All right, and let's say if you see that person, you're like, and then after that you see that person, you're like, wow, Lord, your creation is so beautiful. (laughs) And then what if, this actually happens a lot. I never, I'm proud to say I never said this to anyone, but let's see if you come and you say, my sister, the Lord told me, God told me that you'll be my wife. (laughs) No, let me tell you, if God actually told you, guys, and me too, I'm going to keep it to myself. I'm going to pray about it. But in that situation, are you using the Lord or are you being used by the Lord? Are you using the Lord for the glory of your fame or are you being used by him for the glory of his name? Which one do you choose? Which one do you choose, using him or being used by him? Being used by him. I believe that you guys will all want to be used by him. Amen? So let us stop using the Lord's name. Stop using God for your fame. Start being used by him for his glory. Amen? And... Let's continue in verse 6a, the first part of verse 6. Verse 6, okay. Then he said, the fire said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. My fourth point, a fire that can be passed down to generations. There's one minister, very big minister, has a big healing ministry in America. One time he was being interviewed and he said, um, what's going to happen after you pass away? He, told, he said this, my ministry is not going to be continued because my ministry is only for my generation. He said that not in a good way. He said that basically he's saying no one is good enough to continue my ministry. That is not right. What is the fire of God? The fire that is passed down. The fire said to Moses, I am the God, I am the fire that was with Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob. With Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob. He said, I am the God of your father. This statement breaks my heart. I was once sitting in a class in ORU, in an Old Testament class. I was sitting and the teacher was talking to us about this. You want to know the most common used name of name, names for God? <clears throat> Elohim, <clears throat> Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi. I said, for sure it's one of them. He said, no, it's the God of your father. It broke my heart. <clears throat> From that, I said, you are the God of my father, but you are my God too. I took offense to that. As I said, I'm very ambitious, yes, but now I use my ambition for the glory of the kingdom of God. I'm going to explain to you why. I said, Lord, knowing that that is the most common used name for you, I'm going to make sure that thousands and millions will turn to you through my life. Making them not only the God of my father, the God of us, young people. Young people, we must be proud that we are Christians. Christ, Jesus Christ is not just the God of my father, the God of me. He's not just the God of your father, the God of you. God didn't only want to be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, can I be your God, Moses? He wants to be your God. He wants to be your God. The fire of the Holy Spirit does not stay in one generation. 
it ignites more and more in each generation. What happens when you meet fire and fire? A bigger fire happens. What happens when you put the, the fire of the Holy Spirit in the Father meets the fire of the Holy Spirit in the Son's generation? You know what will happen? The double portion anointing. All these times I thought the double portion anointing was the parents giving one to the children and the children receiving two, the parents receiving none. The Holy Spirit corrected me. He corrected me. All right, can I ask someone here, uh, maybe someone of the children, children, um, one from the children, uh, this, uh, what do you call it? The children church? The Sunday service? Sunday school? And one from the youth? Can, can one guy and one, one little boy, come, can you guys come forward? I want to use you guys as an illustration. Can anyone? Maybe can one, any one of you? All right, and maybe one more? And, okay, thank you. Oh, let's give them a big round of applause. Hallelujah. All right. Now, I'll give, let's play a little bit of a skit, okay? Let's say I'm a cashier at, at Walmart or maybe at a restaurant. And then this, these two lovely, I know him. So, and what's your name? Tang Tang. Tang Tang. All right, let's just put it this way. Let's say the father and the son. Okay. <laughs> This is not, not the Father in heaven. It's our generation. The Father's generation, the Son's generation. Let's say they both were thirsty. They wanted to buy water, okay? But each one of them has one dollar and one dollar. And then they go to the store. Can you come with me? And then they, they see water. He said, can I buy that? You say, okay, sure. It's one dollar. So the Father buys one dollar. The Son buys one dollar, Right? But let's say, I mean, of course, children, we eat more, we drink more, we sleep more, we do everything more, right? So let's say the kid drinks the water, and let's say it's empty. Let's say this water is empty, okay? Because the father sees that the son needs the water more, the father said, hey, son, take my water, right? Let me tell you, let me, let me ask you, how much did they buy? How much, how much did they buy with for each person? One dollar. The son received two. But let's say, and then the, the, the store manager saw and he said, man, wow, what a heart. Because of that, the store manager decides, let's say these are bottles, okay? You know what? I give you two bottles because you give to your son. That is the double portion anointing. It's not like this. Okay, I buy one, you buy one, we each get one. And then the father gives to the son, and then bye-bye. The father says no. What happened to Elijah and Elisha, let me ask you? Elisha said, I want a, I want a double portion anointing. And then Elijah said, you receive it. What happened to Elijah? Because of that, the Lord called him to heaven to a calling that is so high. The Lord gave him two bottles, a calling that is so high that throughout the history of Adam and Eve, until now, only two human beings will do. Elijah and one more unknown prophet will come back to earth during the rapture or after the rapture will preach the gospel to the Jewish people. So right now, he is not dead. He never experienced physical death. Because Elijah gave to Elisha, the Lord gave him something more. Thank you so much. Give them a big round of applause. And I actually need the water. Oh, sorry. I'm very thirsty. So, right. You get something? That is the fire of the Holy Spirit. It's given from the Father to the Son. It will ignite in the Son. The Son will get two. The Father will get two. It's one from me, one from you, one for me, two for me, two for you. That is how the math of the Holy Spirit works. It's not one plus one equals two. It's one plus one equals four. Four, two for the son, two for the father. Amen? That's why, number four, a fire that can be passed down to generations. And, in, and okay, you guys get something? Now, I, I've, experienced, I've explained to you guys the four, what are the four, uh, what, what are the Holy Spirit's fire? Like, what are the symbols of it? What does it signify? I told you guys four of it, right? Now, what happens 
when we get in contact with that fire. Let's read in verse 6b, the second part of 6. The, uh, at this, Moses hit his face because he was afraid to look at God. What happened when he saw the fire, I think this is very cute. I mean, Moses was a bearded man. He was 40 years old. But he, when he saw God, he was like a baby. He was like, he was scared. He didn't want to see the Lord's face. He didn't want to see the Lord's face. He hit him his face. What happens when you're so filled and when you're so filled with the fire of God? You hide your face. The, the, the more you get in contact with the fire of the Holy Spirit, the more you hide your face. I'm not saying you be shy, no. But you forget about your disabilities. You start focusing on his abilities. Once he said, I'm going to use you, Jeremy, to be a preacher. I said, how, how could you use me to be a preacher? First of all, I may be the son of a preacher. I'm not a good preacher. And then I, I, I said that long time. I, I had very bad grades in my Bible class, by the way. So I, I was very bad. <laughs> and I said, how can you use me? But now it's different. When he says, I'm going to use you to the nations. I'm going to use you, Jeremy, to preach in FEMC, youth. I don't say, Lord, but I'm unable. I hide my face and I said, I'm not able, but you are. You have sent me, therefore you, you will equip me. And what happens, what happens when you hide your face? Verse 10. This is a little bit addition for the team. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you about the verse I had. For, I'm just going to read to you. Verse 10. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, my people, the Israelites out of Egypt. When Moses hid his face, the Lord sent him. Many times we say, Lord, send me. But he said, I'm not going to send you first. Why? You have not hid your face. So Moses hid his face. And then the Lord said, you go now. You're an apostle. You know the key of being an apostle? I'm not one, but I, I studied the apostles. It's to hide your face. No more using God, being used by God. Yes, but no more using God. <clears throat> and God said, I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, not the land, the people. <clears throat> Burma is more about the people than the land. So if you say, why am I sent here? <clears throat> Let me tell you. Verse 10, in your context, in our context, so now go. I am sending you to America to bring my people, the Burmese, out of sin. So now go, I am sending you to America to bring my people, the Burmese, back to my will. Why, why is he calling you? Why are you here? Why are you here? Simple, for his kingdom. To bring back his people. To bring back his people. Therefore, when the Lord sends you, he's going to use the Burmese church to not only influence the Burmese, but the Americans too. When he sends you, don't say, but Lord, I'm Burmese. I'm Asian. You know, Asians in America, we're overlooked. I'm Asian, Lord. I couldn't speak as well as the Americans. He told me, you know what, Jeremy? When I'm here right now, I'm not Burmese, I'm not Indonesian, I'm not Asian. I'm not Chinese, I'm not Asian. I'm a Christian. When he sends, hallelujah, give him, give him glory. When you go, you're an apostle. With this, I am finished. You want to know when did the, the, the disciples of Christ, when were they called the apostles? They were once, in one, one, one story, they were called the apostles because the Lord sent them to go on missions, but they went back. And when they went back to Jesus, meeting Jesus before Jesus died, they called him the disciples again. The change happened after they received the gift of tongues, the baptism of the Spirit, speaking in tongues, and second, the baptism of the fire. After Acts chapter 2 or 3, I forgot, after that, they were not called 
the apostles, the disciples, they were called the apostles. Before we are called apostles, we're still going to be a disciple to Jesus forever. But we're going to be an apostle to the nations. Before he sends you, he's going to burn you with his fire. And today I just want, I came here, I said, Lord, I don't, if it's not your will, if it makes sense, if I come here and I just preach a message that soothes your itching ears, that I read that about last night. Don't preach a message that just comforts the ear. I'm not saying that you guys are expecting that. No, no, no. I love your heart. And I, as I was here, I love your heart. I adore your heart. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I was sent here not to preach to you guys a message, a lullaby message. I want to preach to you guys a fire, about a fire of the Holy Spirit. It's going to ignite in you. In the secret places that speaks God's word, they can be passed down to generations and that does not burn you out. After this, I'm going to invite the team, to, the worship team to come forward. We're going to sing a song and let, I want us to pray. Really ask for that fire to come down. I said, Lord, if it's going to be usual, if it's very normal, don't send me. Thank you. Don't send me. I ask for supernatural things today. Let me stretch myself to better fit the anointing. And I can stay here first. I'm going to stretch myself. Don't say that you, you, cannot do, you cannot do it. I remember getting a shirt when I was eight years old. The shirt was too big for me. And then I said, Mom, I love this shirt. My mom got me that shirt. And my mom told me, uh, do you want me to, to shrink the shirt so that it can better fit you? I said, no, Mom. Wait for me to get bigger so I can better fit that. The anointing he has for you. He's not going to shrink it so that you fit in it. He's going to wait for you to grow bigger so you can fit in it. And today is the time where we all grow bigger. Amen? Now let us all stand up. And whatever song you guys have about the Holy Spirit, I would love to sing that with you guys. Let us just... Let us today... I want us to really focus on the fire of God. I said, Lord, pour your fire, pour your spirit. Give us that fire. Who here wants that fire? Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not the best person to be here handing out that fire to you. No. I am not the best. I'm not the rich man. I'm the, I'm the poor man that found bread. And I'm going to tell you where to find that bread. I'm going to pray for you guys. Really so that the fire be poured out. But before I let us sing this song, are you guys ready? Yes? Any, any song? What song are you guys going to sing? Oh, perfect. All right. <clears throat> Maybe we can sing it from the... Set a fire down in my soul That I can contain In this moment, forget the left and right. Focus on Him. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can contain. I want more of you, God. Set a fire in my soul that I can control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. The fire down in my soul that I can contain and I can control. I want more of you. I set a fire down in my soul that I can control. I want more. It's open for those of you who really want that fire if you really really want that fire you say I don't care what my friends say I want your fire if that is you I urge you to come forward and I'm gonna pray for you doesn't have to be the most people 
the people that want it the most come forward I know this is a tongue speaking church for those that are speaking tongues hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's sing it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, and now the leaders, would you please help me and pray for them one by one? Pray for them. just told me I may be wrong but I don't think I am there's one person here or maybe even more I saw the word suicide 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 killing yourself no 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 no. that's never the answer I want to pray for you wherever you are right now if you are here with all heads closed with all eyes closed and heads bowed if you are here Raise your hand. Can someone stand behind her? My sister, your life is precious. You are not to throw your life. He is in you. Don't take his life, okay? Receive that fire in Jesus' name. Receive that love. Can you hug her? Receive that love in Jesus' name. Confusion. I see the word confusion. I don't know. You're confused. I don't know what you're confused at. But you're confused. Maybe a major, college major. I think this is more than one people. It's a group of people. You guys are confused. You don't know where you want to go in life you don't know who you want to go with in life he sent me to remind you that so long that he is with you I am with you he said I want to stretch today stretch the anointing who here have not received the, the gift of tongues speaking in tongues may, may you raise your hand can you raise your hand so I can see if you have not received the gift of tongues Hallelujah. Would you, would you, would you, if you are at the back, would you come forward? But if you are in front, repeat after me. Holy Spirit, I need you. I need your fire. I cannot live without you. Teach me to be more and more like you. I want your Holy Spirit through the sign of speaking in tongues. I want to pray for hours use me oh father use me holy spirit in jesus name and if you feel something is shaking in your mouth just let it out that is the holy spirit working in through you now everyone in front let us all hold hands you know what let us all hold hands let us all hold hands those of you in the front and in the back, please help pray for the people in front. He loves you, young people. He loves you. The fire is poured when the people are united. 
make sure no no one is no one is uh, everyone is connected with one another my sisters in front could you please get in line with them thank you make sure no one no one misses no one misses from one another I ask that he touch us in a supernatural way I feel something in my hand right now as I felt as I went out of my room I said Lord put the fire in my heart it's going strong right now and I want each one of you guys to receive that there will be a flow of the Holy Spirit flowing flow the Holy Spirit flowing those people in the, in, the, in the corner can you touch the shoulder of your friend no one should be separated this is a flow in Jesus name in this moment I want to invite my best friend let me pray and I'm going to invite him in a tangible way in this moment I invite everyone to pray I'm gonna sing a song that I usually sing to invite the Holy Spirit without music that's fine I'm gonna pray here first I want him to be poured out tonight you can play music silently Spirit, fall on me now. I need your anointing. Come in your power. If you know, you can sing along. I love you, Holy Spirit. You're captivating my soul. And every day, I grow to love you more. I'm reaching for your heart. You hold my life in your hands Drawing me closer to you I feel your power in you Nothing compares to this place Where I can see you face to face I worship you in spirit and in truth Come Holy Spirit Reaching for your heart you hold my life in your hands. Sweet presence, oh Lord. Sweet presence, come, Holy Spirit, come, oh Holy Spirit, come. Fill us with your fire. Come, oh Holy Spirit. He is here. He is here. I'm gonna touch the hands of the people in the middle. Be ready for something to flow in you. My sisters in front, would you hold my hand? Flow, Holy Spirit. Everyone is speaking tongues. Hallelujah. Fall on us, Holy Spirit. Fall on us, Holy Spirit. 
He's not done yet. I pray that some of you that have not spoken in tongues, you guys will suddenly speak in tongues right now as we hold hand. The corporate anointing is here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Everyone, would you repeat after me? Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, thank you for your fire. From today, I don't want to live for myself. I want to live for you. Give me that fire, oh Lord. That fire that doesn't burn me out. The fire that can be passed down to generations. The fire that ignites in secret places and the fire that speaks your word i want to live in that fire i want to be that bush you burn from within thank you lord in jesus name in jesus name amen hallelujah give him glory um you seen that set a fire set a fire down, down in my soul, soul that you guys may I make way control, your way back to your seats that I can control I want more of you God I want more of you you guys may make your way back to your seats Set a fire down in my soul that I can contain that I can control I want more of you God I want more of you tonight thank you so much Jeremy for the, the word of God and we need fire amen we need fire fire for the Lord let the fire burn inside of us not just tonight the rest of our lives may the Lord bless all young people I love you all and uh, I am praying that the Lord will touch you continually. And also I pray for your studies and all of you. And uh, I love young people to be men of God and women of God. May the Lord bless you. Let me uh, pray for closing. Father God, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for the word that we heard from your servant, Jeremy. Lord, we thank you for the fire of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for the passion and your grace and your mercy for everyone. Lord, tonight as we come before you, we humble ourselves. We need your fire. We need your love. We need your mercy. As now, Lord, these young people are studying for their uh, future uh, education, further studies, and also the jobs that they are doing right now. Lord, I am praying that let them live according to your will. Let them do what you want them to do to, uh, for their lives and for your glory. Lord, we thank you for tonight and we give you thanks and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. God bless you and have a time of fellowship and talk together. Okay, talk to someone.